Good night, everyone. Welcome to Work Consultancy Inc's We Connect, a discussion forum dedicated to your personal and professional development. My name is Brittany Seeley, and I will be your host for tonight's session. Tonight, we'll really be focusing on keeping things simple in the digital world. And we are live on Facebook, so good night to all of our Facebook viewers. We are expecting a very enlightening session tonight. So I would encourage all of you to take a video or picture throughout the session and post it on your story, tagging us at work Barbados underscore, and that will be in the chat. So tonight's session is absolutely free. So if you know someone who can benefit from this information, don't let them miss out, okay? Just some housekeeping before we begin. All of our sessions are recorded. During the presentation, feel free to leave your questions and comments in the chat. And if you wish to make your contribution verbally, simply indicate by raising your hand and we will unmute your mic. So let's jump right into the session. Tonight's speaker is Liz Stanton. She is the senior advisor and presenter. Liz served for 25 years as an officer in the Cheshire Constabulatory, working with the most vulnerable in the community. After a decade in the field, Liz played a vital role in developing and implementing the Forces Safer Schools and Young People Partnership model. It was for this work that she received the Order of the British Empire, MBE Award, which was presented in 2013. Liz is now a senior trainer and family protection manager for Get Safe Online. She delivers vital online awareness training to multiple agencies and partners, both in the UK and abroad, most recently in Caribbean British overseas territories. We are so excited to have you, Liz, and we can't wait to hear what you have to share with us. Over to you. Okay, thanks, Brittany, for that. Um, let me just go on to my slides here. Okay, thanks very much. Um, and it is an absolute fantastic opportunity to chat to you all. I just wish I was actually back in Barbados delivering this face to face. Um, but as such, I just hope that this is the next best thing for you all. If you are hearing me all okay, then please just pop something in the chat box or any problems, just let me know. Um, also, there will be plenty of time to ask questions at the end, but feel free to drop me uh, again any questions in the chat box um, and I'll try and answer them as I go along. Let me just open my chat box and then I've got it there on the screen so I can see it. Brilliant. Hearing me, that's absolutely brilliant. Thanks very much, Chantel. So off we go. So right now, um, the majority of us in the UK and around the world have things to concern us that perhaps not normally, um, like our own and the family's physical safety and mental well-being, our income, job security and the wider economy. And because of this, the cyber criminals are just taking full advantage of these upsets and uncertainties and playing on our weaknesses to gain access to our world, our online world. As there's so much to cover, I'm only going to be able to deliver the, what I can in two sessions. So I do hope you find it useful and helpful. And uh, if there is anything that you need covering, especially, please just drop us a line and we'll cover it next week as well. But today I thought we'd start with the basics and then next week we'll obviously look at more targeted uh, concerns. So who am I? Well, um, I live in Wales and we're on week seven of the lockdown. Life is actually getting a little easier. We're all settling down and some of the routines um, are getting easier for us all, especially with the kids being around. And when I say kids, the 19 and 23 but I'll be glad when they go back to work in uni as the constant streaming and gaming till all hours is testing um, my morning person's statement. And that, I think that's why I've crossed it out really. They both seem to have turned nocturnal. But anyway, on a positive note, I have found peace in the shed where I'm actually um, broadcasting from um, because that's the only place I get some peace and quiet. With the husband, two sons, a dog and an 85 year old mum around the house, um, space is very premium for us but we are all adjusting and um, we've got our health which is a blessing and that's all we can ask for but just a way of introduction we are a uk non-for-profit organization 
working in partnership with government and leading organisations in banking, retail, internet security and other sectors. Our advice is always completely up to date and we consistently signpost users to the most effective and up to date resources, which as we all know changes on a regular basis. Our site is split into two sections. You've got personal and business. On the slide, you can see the personal one at the moment. Um, you'll find everything you need to know and much more to help you navigate around the issues that we're going to cover and look at today. The business side offers invaluable and much needed resources for small to medium sized businesses. And we cover on topics such as hardware devices, information security, online safety and security, rules, guidelines and procedures, software and ways to work, especially now when many of us are finding us that we're having to work from home because of the coronavirus. But what you may not know is that you've actually got your own site. Get Safe Online has had the opportunity to bring these services to the Caribbean as part of the UK's Commonwealth Cybersecurity Programme. It's fully funded by the programme and the services come at no cost to the people accessing them. You can access your site, which reflects local needs and concerns by either clicking onto the flag on the Commonwealth site or actually going direct to your site using the www.getsafeonline.bb. The information is easy to follow and lots of videos to watch and you can always pop over to our site if you need to check on see what we're doing as well. So before we start, let's just remind ourselves why technology is brilliant and so much fun. There is so much negativity out there on the press uh, and on the web, but actually technology, you know, it is brilliant. Just watch this. Okay, well, um, that sets the scene, doesn't it? So let's have a look at these figures, January 2020. These figures just shows the digital, mobile and social media has become an indispensable part of everybody's lives. More than 4.5 billion people are using the internet at the start of this year, with social media users at 3.8 billion mark. For criminals, it's far easier for them to sit be behind a keyboard and just either target or chance their luck. These figures just show how many potential targets they can choose from. With a bit of social engineering, 
they will try and lure unsuspecting users into sending them their confidential data, in fact, infecting the computers with malware or opening links to infect sites. But let's, before we move on, I just want you to think about what do you like doing online and which devices do you like to use? What devices have you got at home and what are you using? Some of you have probably got quite a lot of devices that you've got at home. Um, but I just want you to think about what actually do you do online? I'm guessing that it would be something like this. And when I ask, shopping is usually always at the top of the list. But let's face it, the internet is a fantastic tool with opportunities that allow us to do things that we may never be able to do in the real world. But whilst you're searching and living your life online, remember, everything you look for can be saved by your search engine for up to six months. And you may notice that you get pop-ups so if you're on social media, you may get a, get a pop up there if you've been, say, looking for new shoes or something. It all relates one way or another to what you've been searching at some point on the Internet. Well, sites do talk to each other and you probably have forgotten that you've given permission to that site or that app to share your details to a third party. This actually raises concerns because if the device is a shared one, especially with a child, the Internet does not distinguish as the age of the user. So it's always, it's always a good idea to look at ad blocks, parental controls and separate user profiles, especially where children are concerned. All of which we go into, the, into this on the, our details, into it more on the website. But when I asked to think about what devices do you use and what devices you've got at home, did any of you think about smart devices? This is quite a list but obviously it's not an extensive list at all. Connected devices and toys can be find, found in most homes and have changed how many of us go about our daily lives and how our children interact and play. What's the first thing you actually reach for in the morning? I bet it's your actual mobile phone because most of us use it as our alarm clock and when you turn it, when you go to it and turn your alarm off, you're then looking maybe at your social media, the weather, you're just checking your emails and before you know it, you're late for work. But let's just have a look at this. Because we take smart devices for granted, it's easy for us to forget about them. So it's actually worth looking at what potentially compromises you and your family. Apart from your data being unintentionally shared by the devices, there's an additional risk from devices which can actually designed for communication surveillance, for example, smart speakers and cameras. It's wonderful that your fridge recognises that you might need more milk, but imagine coming home from work and finding your freezer defrosted. But what about the baby monitor that starts playing music or talking to your child? Now that is scary. So as a starting point, it's essential that you change your passwords from the manufacturer's default and register the warranty so that if there are any updates, it, they will be done. Also be wary of purchasing cheap or second-hand devices as they may not have the same high standards or may possibly already be corrupted. Also, if you're thinking of selling or disposing of any of your devices or passing them down or even passing them up to elderly relatives, you must wipe them clean first, otherwise somebody else may just benefit from the information that's been left on them. Remember, anything that can be connected to the internet, internet can be compromised, hacked or corrupted. So it's worth treating these devices as if it were your mobile phone. These two need updating and keeping secure, so it's worth checking what devices are connected. And if you don't need them anymore, turn them off or just connect from the Wi-Fi. So we're just going to take a little bit of time and actually look at what the threats are out there. These threats are universal and some have been around for many years. They may be old, but the criminals are getting smarter and are making them more complex. The one thing that these things, these have all got in common is that they are victim operated. They play on your lack of awareness and exploit these weaknesses. I'll go into more detail as we go along, but let's just pick up on a few. Malware pops up everywhere, but there are things that you can do about them to stop them. Phishing, well, you may have heard that term. 
It's a type of online identity theft. It uses emails and fraudulent websites that are designed to steal your personal data or information such as credit cards, passwords, account details and other personal information. Smishing is a form of fraud that uses mobile phone text messages and that lures you into calling back a fraudulent phone number or visiting dodgy websites or even downloading malicious contents. And then vishing, again this is when somebody rings you and tricks you into revealing critical financial or personal information. And then just think about your apps. Where do you download things from? There are so many rogue apps out there. It's so easy to create a new app and redirect people to that app without many knowing it's not a real one. So be careful that you actually only use recognized stores like Google, uh, Google Play, Apple Store to download your apps from. And then looking at geolocation, fitness apps, social media, and when taking photographs can all identify where you are at that given time. There are some positive reasons to keep them switched on, but I'd really ask yourself first, what benefit does the app offer if you were to leave the location switched on? And then think about lost or stolen. What would you do if your phone was stolen? It's always worth knowing how you can remotely wipe or lock your phone if it does get, ever get lost or stolen. And don't forget to back it up as well. Imagine losing all your photos. With downloading from an illegal or dodgy site, you're not guaranteed what you're going to get as well. So just be careful about downloading things on your phone as well as your, your laptops and other devices. Because once you've clicked and the download begins, you could potentially be downloading malware as well. And you wouldn't even know about it until it actually presents itself. And then we've got complacency and lack of confidence. You may think it'll never happen to you or you'll deal with it when it happens. Well, then please think again, as it may only be a matter of time because it may already be happening now. So we can see some headlines here. We see them every day regarding cybercrime, people being scammed, blackmailed, businesses being held to ransom, data breaches, and so, so much more. But did you know that 80% of all data loss is caused by human error? You can watch presentations like this, do online courses, read manuals, talk to people. All these are great because the bottom line is it's your responsibility to self-educate and make changes to help you not become a victim. So in this session, we're going to keep looking at how you can make small changes to the way you do things online, which in turn will keep you safe and in a better position to block the criminals when they come snooping around. So let's take the first one, software and apps. What are the threats? Trojans, um, viruses, worms. We keep hearing about them all the time, but do we actually know what they do? Well, they all do different things. Some can listen and record conversations, turn on cameras, log your keystrokes, capture what you do, steal documents, files, send GPS coordinates to criminals, and even look at your browser history and much, much more. These don't just stop when discovered or patched, as new ones are released every day, like the recent Trojan that can read text messages, which is really worrying because many of us receive our secure verification codes delivered this way. The only way to protect yourself is not to let them onto your systems in the first place. They don't just appear. You've had to have done something to let them in, like installing software from links and not from the official site or even by clicking on dodgy websites. It's also essential that you are running the most up-to-date software systems. Take Windows 7, for example. There are no patches or updates available to individuals. However, some companies and organizations have been given extensions to update their systems before they switch that off. And again, as a quick fix, cover your camera when you're not using it. Replace it face down or facing the wall. Imagine it switching itself on and starting recording. Now that's really isn't a nice, comfortable thought at all.
So again, looking at internet security and what can we do? Well, check what's available already on your devices. Install the latest software and app updates and ensure they're switched on to upgrade automatically. And don't forget to register any smart devices with the company so they can also be updated when new patches are released. If the phone is bought from a phone provider, then it should already have antivirus installed. But it is worth checking anyway. Remember, Trojans don't just appear. It's you who've let them in. And you may have heard the term jailbreaking. Well, this is when you switch off software restrictions, which then leaves your phone vulnerable to everything else. So if you are buying a second hand phone, just check it, is, it hasn't been jailbreaked. And downloading and clicking on dodgy websites aren't the only way to infect your devices. And many people use the computer as a charger for the phone, or they'll use a USB memory stick for storage. If these have been infected, then the malware will just transfer onto the computer too, and vice versa. So make sure you keep your backup device separate and secure from your computer, and don't just leave it in attached all day. There is an argument to be had in that some say Apple devices are immune to malware. Well, it's very rare, but there has been and will continue to be developed malware that will attack Apple devices. So as the nature of cyber attacks continues to change, I think it's important that every user does what they can to protect themselves and obviously others as well, whatever system you use. And looking at backups, how, how would you feel if you lost everything or your device was locked um, or, as I say, even, even stolen? Have you thought about backing up your devices, even your phones? It is important to get into the habit of either downloading onto a memory stick or a hard drive. If you back up this way, just be mindful that about the, uh, the malware. But what about secure cloud services? That's absolutely brilliant. But before you actually start using them, do your research. Check how they hold your data and who has access to it. And do a little bit of snooping around. Find, find out if they've had any breaches in the past and how they've dealt with them as well. So thinking about passwords, let's just have a look um, and see how easy it is if you are the weakest link, especially within an organization. Did you decide to become a hacker? <laughs> well, I'm not really sure what it means to become a hacker. That's like some guy in a hoodie who types really fast and stays up all night writing code and cracking passwords. Not me. I just spy on people and see what makes them click. It's not a bad job. Canning CEO of Qualicard said to report earnings after their blockbuster. So you consider this a job? I put a lot of work into this lazy. It takes research to figure out the key players, learn all about them, their families, their friends, what they care about. You have to understand the company's organization. I get a lot of my information from the sales department because they're always so quick and eager. They're hungry. People trust too easily. They don't look at the details. I do. Details matter. That's what I'm good at. It has to look completely believable. It has to look familiar. This is where research is important. It's not some generic piece of spam. It's an email from their boss with their company's signature. It's written in the voice of the boss. It's what he would say if he were writing this. What about the malware itself? How does that work? Somebody else out there already wrote all the code that does the actual attack. I'm just using it in the attachment. My skill is in my ability to get a bunch of people to click on that attachment. I always wonder what it's like when the whole thing unfolds on their end, when the panic sets in. Please leave your message after the beep. Hey, this is Rajiv in finance. Call me as soon as you get this. Some stuff with my laptop. Okay, are you on your way to the office? Something's going on with our file service. Uh, Karen and HR are 
Since this dashboard is really slow, we're getting calls from users on it. Apparently, there's a malware attack targeting our main. It's ransomware. They're holding us hostage. We're locked out of everything. I, I can't even check my phone. What about the backup? That will take days. We need this fixed now. Just pay it. We don't have a choice. We're reporting earnings in two hours. But how do we know Just that they'll pay it? Put every single person on getting us back up and running. That's the only priority now. Okay, it's done. I have the decrypt key. <laughs> The ransomware was just to distract us. They got inside. They got everything. Customer data, financials, everything. Qualicard is reeling today from the news that hackers have released the personal information of nearly the two Nasdaq million. closed lower today, led by Qualicard, which was down 14% on news that their recent data breach may be far worse. The company originally stock announced. fell to a new all-time low on news that CEO Mark Hanning is stepping down after what is turning out to be one of the worst breaches of personal information information in recent history. You feel bad about releasing the personal information, all the financials, all the money that was lost? All I did was get the files. I'm not the one that decided to release them. I'm not the one that shorted the stock. Somebody else had their reasons for that. It's above my pay grade. I needed to do a job and I did it well. And that's what's expected of anyone, isn't it? It's bounced back. Okay, if we all pick ourselves up off the floor, that's quite um, a square, a scary video, really, just to watch. Um, I will look in more detail about ransomware um, and what could potentially happen next week. But until then, let's crack on. Okay, so we're looking at passwords, 2FA and VPNs. So password security is something we all know about, and yet it continues to be the main reason we become victims of cybercrime. You may remember the collection hashtag one breach or followed by the short, shortly by hashtag two to five. Well, these were mega dumps, which basically means it had hoovered up so many company breaches and put them all in together in a file and sold on. The figures shown here are only um, for the hashtag one. 2.7 billion total records were leaked. So what does that mean? Well, companies like these and thousands more hold your details. And when they get attacked, so do you. Criminals will use this information to make their attack on you personal. So this sort of data is sold for very little money over and over again on the dark web. And just have a think about what passwords do you use and what emails do you use for the things that you sign up for online? Everything seems to have a price on the dark web and many online accounts contain enough personal info to enable so many different crimes. So for example, Fraudsters can use hack food delivery accounts to order takeaways. A Skype or email password can be sold for just three pound, despite the fact that the criminals can then use it to send messages out containing phishing links to all your friends. Your eBay details allow fraudsters to dupe buyers into sending them money for fake listings. Or even Netflix is a route to identity fraud with the added bonus of them being able to stream content for free. And these figures do change on a regular basis, as it all depends on the demand. So it's simple, really. Using the same passwords for all your accounts makes you vulnerable. And weak passwords can be hacked in seconds. However, if they are done correctly, they give you a free, easy and very effective method to prevent unauthorised access. But first, let's see how easy it is to give your password away. You know, we've been hearing a lot about cybersecurity lately, largely because of what happened to Sony. Companies and individuals are more concerned about the safety and privacy of their information than ever. President Obama has unveiled a number of new proposals this week to crack down on hackers, and he plans to address this in the State of the Union speech on Tuesday. And it's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. You know, 
The most popular password in the United States is password one, two, three. And as long as we're, as long as that's the case, we're vulnerable. So today we sent a camera out on the Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And <laughs> this is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Wow. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> Like, my cat's name, and then just, like, a random number. Okay. Has you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. So, like, a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like, number one? Uh, like, my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. So, Jolie, 6, 12, 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh my goodness. Uh, um, let me think. Okay, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight. And then Israel. It's, it's only three, but it's, you know, it's, uh, for me, it's strong enough. Ireland. One, two, three, four. Chema. One, two, three. Spell G E M M A. Well, most of them are in Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Like so, what? like. Like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name. What's your uh, grandma's name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So, Maria is your password? Oh, yeah. Now you know my password. That always makes me chuckle. It may be quite an old one, but um, but it does get the point across straight away. And I'm sure most of you are on social media, and I'm going to cover this in, in more detail next week, but I just want to remind you about the other ways criminals can steal your passwords. So with social media, everything you post is one step closer to letting the criminals in. How many of you have seen posts like this on your Facebook site? You may not realize, but many of these questions are the same you use in your security questions. I'll leave that with you. And especially next week, we'll cover it in more detail, as I say. So creating strong passwords. I do understand it's hard to remember all your passwords, unless you just have the one. And I'm sure that's why many of you are resetting passwords on a regular basis. But all you need to do is use a sequence of three random words and add in some special characters and you will then have a formula which is simple to remember and yet hard to crack. Don't use anything that's connected to you personally, like your first pet's name or even your, the word password even, which you'll be surprised at how many people do use that. Make the password long, at least 12 to 16 characters and please don't share them with anybody. To use strong passwords that aren't easy for hackers to guess and use different passwords for all your accounts. Remember it's important to have different passwords for different accounts and also use different emails as well, especially for your financial accounts. Don't let a criminal buy your Gmail password for 75p or I think actually it's about the same $75, we're kind of like the same now. And then find it also logs you into your bank account details. And while we're talking about passwords, think about your router. Your router is perhaps the most important gadget in your home. It checks all incoming and outcoming, outgoing traffic. It's acting as a sentry to make sure that nothing dangerous comes in and nothing sensitive goes out. It controls access to your Wi-Fi network. And through all that, all your phones, your tablets, your laptops, all them smart devices that we looked at before, even including your printer, goes through that. If somebody else gains access to that network, whether a remote hacker or even your next door neighbour, it can be quite quick work to compromise all those devices as well. What we recommend is changing the password required to access the router settings, as many people just leave the defaults in place. 
and that means somebody who knows the default passwords or if they can guess them could also gain an, um, access or entry. It's also a good idea to change the Wi-Fi password to it as well. Yes, I know it means you'll have to reconnect all your devices again, but it also kicks off any unwanted visitors that might be lurking around. And it's also worth it. Um, have a look at setting up guest networks. As the name suggests, it means you can grant your guests access to Wi-Fi connections without letting them on accessing the rest of your network. So everything that you've got going through that network will be protected. But please don't panic. You can get step by step instructions on how to do this on our website. Um, all you have to do is just click on to that link or even just in your Google search or whichever search you use, just put your, um, your router in there and, and ask, how do I change the router password? Password managers, they're also worth looking at, um, especially if you struggle to remember your passwords. Um, it's always best to go for paid ones as they offer more security. And another security layer is the 2FA. It's free and it reduces the risks of being hacked by anyone um, by asking you to provide a second form of ID. So if someone tries to sign into your account from a different device, it gives you immediate notification that someone's doing this. It will also prompt you to sign in again if you use a different device or if you're in an area that it hasn't recognised before. So how easy is it? Well, looking at, say, WhatsApp here, all you need to do is go to your WhatsApp account um, go to the menu, the settings, the account, two step verification and just enable it. And then what happens that you'll create a six digit pin code um, that's easy to remember, but also make sure you add your email address on there because if you forget it, you can retrieve it that way as well. And then every so often, again, it will just ask you to verify the PIN. Um, and, and if you're using a different device, it will ask you all the time. And the other one possibly is to look at is VPNs. They are, again, another layer that helps protect your data and it will monitor your traffic as well. But there are two points to consider about using a VPN. Where are you and what are the chances of being inter intercepted if you don't use a VPN? But what I do stress on this one is do your research before you buy and definitely don't use the free ones because you are trusting the provider with transferring all your data. So let's just have a look just to remind you how easy it is to create a password that you never forget. <laughs> Passwords are always a problem. We know they should be complicated to stop the hackers, but then we can't remember them. So we go for easy ones, which hackers just love. We live in a world where passwords have multiplied like a rabbits. Passwords, pin numbers, usernames. No brain, however big, can cope with what seems like millions of them. Criminals know that many of us choose passwords like a, well, password, or football, or QWERTY, or even a relative's name. The fact of the matter is, if a word is in a dictionary, then the hackers can crack your password in seconds, which means they can get their hands on your cash, your personal data, even pictures of you and your family, your entire life. But a good password locks them out. So it's worth taking the time to invent one that it'd take too much effort for criminals to crack. And actually, it's quite easy. Here's how. Choose three random words that you can remember. And a date that's easy to recall. Then put the words together. Maybe put the 19 at the front, the 95 at the end, and capitalize a letter from each word. For instance, the last one. Then bung in a couple of special characters, like an exclamation mark or an at symbol or anything. 
memorable and nigh on uncrackable. So try something like this and make it work for you. Don't write it down. Keep it in mind. Use it. Uh, not this password. Your own. Okay, just before I move on, um, we used to always say don't write your passwords down, but that actually has changed. Um, it is okay to write them down as long as you don't put them onto your computer or stick them anywhere near on your desk of where uh, you're actually working. Put them in a little book, um, write them down in a way that only you know what they mean and put that little book somewhere completely separate to your devices and everywhere else. If that helps you remember them, um, then that's absolutely fine. So let's have a look at social engineering. Well, criminals don't have any qualms about who you are, whether you're young or old, in poor health, or have some other vulnerabilities. They don't care about how much misery they cause. As long as they manage to steal your money, your identity or both, they, 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 they'll, that's it, they'll just go. They make it seem and feel so real that you can understand why people are drawn into many of these scams and it is only getting worse. Over the last three weeks, a well-known cybersecurity company has reported 192,000 coronavirus-related cyber attacks, 30% up on previous weeks. And the UK is far and away the most targeted country in the world for COVID-19 scams and spam emails. Remember, security is all about knowing who and what to trust. So I'm just going to ask you, what is the most important online service password you have? This is where you come unstuck, especially if you've only just got the one password. But just have a think. And why focus on email accounts? Well, your password for emails should be a very unique one because they are the most important one. And there's two reasons for this. Your emails are havens for sensitive information. Remember your other half emailing you a picture of their passport? All well, this could be used for identity theft. Your parents sent you their payment details? Well, how about financial fraud? And all those accounts, registration emails, can help cyber criminals know all the online accounts that we hold and give them access to them all via password resets which remember go into our inbox. And then you've got immediate verification. By compromising your email and sending scam emails out from your valid email address, they have immediate validation in the eyes of your friends and family. It's a great way for them to quickly access a high number of people to further scam. But as I say, there's lots of information on the website about these. So remember, your email account contains a wealth of sensitive information. Criminals can use your email um, to reset passwords, to obtain personal and financial information, such as bank details, your address, your dates of birth, leaving you vulnerable for identity fraud and theft. So secure your email accounts by using a separate password for each email account you hold, and plus enable the two-factor verification. And make sure your email spam filter is always switched on to minimise the risk. But just be aware that some may slip through as well. And do regular health checks on your spam and, st and trash stat boxes. Delete them and don't just let them sit there forever. How often do you clear your spam and trash emails? When was the last time you actually looked in there and did it? Some of the computers and some of the devices are set to automatic and do them um, every three months. You can actually set this, but it is worth making sure that you just go in there on a regular basis and clear them yourselves. So this is actually quite a good slide here. How many of you really look at your emails? And this list should help you decide if it's a genuine one or not. So let's have a look, genuine email address. Even if it looks real, don't you immediately trust an email address without actually doing some of the digging? Because email addresses can actually be cloned as well. 
And what about the impersonal greetings? Scams often use generic, generic greetings and not your name. And it sounds a little bit vague. Be vigilant if the details seem unclear. What about poor formatting, as in sp um, spellings wrong? And then they're asking you for personal details. Please don't click on any email asking you for personal details, even if it's saying to cancel something. If you start to receive lots of spam like this, then it could possibly be an indication that you've been compromised. So how do phishing emails work? So take this one. It's from Netflix. It lands on your inbox and it's saying that you need to validate because your Netflix account's been suspended. When you click on it, you may not notice, but it actually says Netflix after 3.com. That actually isn't the Netflix um, website. But it doesn't say there, if you click on that link, the Netflix one there, verification, that looks real. It takes you to this and it now asks you to sign in with your email address and your password. And once you've got that stage, it then takes you to update your billing information. Notice that it's got a secure padlock on there. It's asking you for all personal details, mobile numbers, and even your date of birth. And then the last page, it takes you to validate your payment. Again, it looks genuine. But the worrying thing on this one as well, it's asking for all your credit card details, your expiry date, your account number, your sort code and even your mother's maiden name and I know for sure that's one of your security questions for your banking as well but don't worry if you get something like this and you click on it and you get to that stage and you fill your details in and then you realize that actually this is a scam what you need to do is come off it quickly straight away sign into your Netflix account um, by going through the, rep, the website and then change your password straight away. If you get to something like this and you've put your details in, then you do need to notify your bank as well. So just take a moment and have a look at this. Can you spot the mistake? The email is a genuine email. It has actually been a cloned email. and everything else on there looks genuine. Some of you may have spotted it. It's actually the only one mistake on this one is the spelling. It should actually be an A instead of an E at the end. But everything else is genuine. Always treat every email as if it's a scam until you can prove it otherwise. Pick up the phone and speak to somebody if they're asking you to do it Use the telephone number that you've got off your account, off the paperwork that you've got, or even just Google the telephone number. Do not use the telephone number that they're asking you to ring. And certainly never give out um, or click on any of the links that they're asking you to do. Do your homework. And then we've got vishing and smishing. Well, this is another way the criminals will target you. Spoof cards allow the criminals to pretend to be someone else to use a fake number that will be visible on your, on your phone um, so that you, you realise that it may be official call. They can even change the voice and make it sound like they're in a busy office. All these tricks are part of a scam. Simply receiving these won't affect the security of your device or information. You've got to respond to them. You've got to give them details or reply to the message or click on the link. just let's take a look at this and watch how easy it is for somebody to actually clone or into hack into your accounts. So I invited a few of the world's best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my vulnerabilities are. And now I'm going to meet them in Las Vegas for DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year. They're going to hack me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. 
Do you want to do a sample of fishing call? What's fishing? Fishing is voice solicitation. And basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Okay. You, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider and okay. see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number. So it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. Hi, I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, sorry. <laughs> my, my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan and we just had a baby and he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry. I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> Log into our account for uses information. And I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying and, um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, At gmail.com. Jessica gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Shh, shh, shh. I'm not on there either. So I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number. 5127. To set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry. So there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed up this. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Hold. So they, they, just gave, they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're going to have to go on and change your password right now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. Gosh, how easy was that? Um, I would suggest if you are setting up things like this that you do actually ask them to put on your records that nobody can change. They have to verify with you if anybody else rings in. Um, even if they are using passwords. So it is worth just speaking to your providers on things. So let's just move on and look at settings. Um, let's have a look. So where do you go? Obviously, I'm, I'm hoping that you go to recognized um, stores, Google or Apple store. So you see, an, you see something that you like, you click on it, um, and then this pops up, terms and conditions, policies. How many of you will just click on it? Do any of you read them? Well, it is actually important that you actually do start to read them. Um, you can change the terms and conditions. And if none of them don't allow you to change them or, or to actually to adapt them to what you want, then I would start asking, do you really need to, to access this website or this app? And the reason being, just watch this little thing here. Data privacy is a serious issue. It's not like on the front of my mind. I think we are pretty secure. I honestly, I don't feel too threatened. So I'm just like, allow, allow, allow. I agree to let this app change my device's call log, including incoming and outgoing calls data. Why would they want to change my call log? Do you have any idea? So I allow this app to record audio at any time without my confirmation. That's pretty terrible. This may allow the app to share or save my calendar data, regardless of confidentiality or sensitivity. It's offensive. I give this app permission to modify calendar events and send emails without my knowledge. I give the app permission to read my text messages. Read my text messages. Read my text messages. Allow this app to modify my contacts. To modify my contacts. Modify my contacts. That's scary. I give this app permission to read my personal profile information. Ugh. Give the app permission to use my precise location. That's not something that I think anybody else needs to know. I agree to let this app automatically turn off airplane mode. Turn off airplane mode. Is that real? That's insane. I give this app permission to read all data about calls on my device. Yeah, it's Why would they do that? That I'm actually kind of surprised about. For real? Is that true? Oh my God. Thank you for alerting me to all this. Really bad. 
feel like I'm giving over my life to an app. <laughs> I should probably start to read these things. So for all them apps and everything that you've signed up to and downloaded, it is actually worth going through all of them. If you don't use them anymore, please cancel them, remove them, change them. Um, because most permissions that you've given probably years ago, um, you, especially the social media sites, you, you're giving them that they can see what you search for, you, you interact with, your chat history, friends list. It just goes on and on and on and locations. So if you don't change them or delete them, they will stay and you've probably signed up to them saying that they can pass your data, details on to third parties as well. And that's where you start to see all your information um, and emails coming through, offering you holidays and, and everything else. The other thing is, um, when you're looking on for your website, please just get rid of them. Sign out of them. Don't just leave them sitting on your phone there at all. Um, yes, it drains your battery, but also it means that they're still open. You're still, still signed into them. So if your phone or your device is compromised, they potentially, the criminal can carry on being you. And if you're not quite sure how to do it, um, everything is done under your settings. So depending on what device you have will depend on what your setting sign looks like. And let's just look about being out and about as well. So if you were to look at your phone now or your device, do you have your Wi-Fi turned on? And if you do, do you actually know what it's connected to? Well, if you're actually sat at home, it's probably connected to your home Wi-Fi address. But when you're out and about, it'll be looking at, for a Wi-Fi hotspot. And what we say about that is presume all Wi-Fi hotspots are insecure because they probably are and use your own data rather than connect on to somebody else's uh, hotspot and if you can use a paid for vpn let's face it burger king sells food not security because it's so easy to set up a spoof wi-fi you can see here a little device it's called a pineapple but basically what that does it sends out a wi-fi signal and it's looking for devices to connect to it and your device will be, if it's switched on, will be searching continually for a signal. And if it finds one, so say you've been to Burger King before and you've signed already into that Wi-Fi, if a spoof Burger King Wi-Fi is set up, it will automatically click onto it and connect to it and you wouldn't be any the wiser. So just have a look at this little video and it will explain to you how easy it is to set them up and how easy it is for the criminals to steal your details without you even knowing. The use of public Wi-Fi in restaurants, malls and airports, well, it's convenient and also it's risky. Hackers target places like that, trolling for personal information that they can use to steal your identity. CNN's Ted Rowland sat down with a former hacker to show you how easy that is to do. Inside Terminal 5 at the Los Angeles International Airport, dozens of people are on their computers. Gregory Evans is a former hacker whose resume includes two years in federal prison. We were doing almost a million dollars, if not more, a week against some of the biggest corporations in the world. We set up in a corner of the terminal so that Evans, who now owns a cybersecurity company, could show us just how vulnerable people are to hackers. I will go and set up a fake Wi-Fi and watch everybody connect to it. And once they connect to it and they start surfing the Internet, now what I'll do is just grab all their traffic. We launched a fake network named LAX Free Wi-Fi. Within minutes, people started connecting to it. Evans then showed us how a hacker can record everything off a computer that joined our network by tracking what I was doing on my laptop. So if they go to their bank, it'll grab all their banking information. 
if they go to their Facebook, it'll grab all that. Their Twitter accounts, if they're writing love letters, I can grab all of that. Or, Evan says even worse, if a hacker has enough time, spyware can be installed, which stays with the victim. You get on the plane, you go to one country, I go to another. But everything that you do, as long as you have that computer, is going to be emailed back to me. During our experiment, we stumbled across what appeared to be a real hacker at work. Along with our fake network, there was another one called Free Public Wi-Fi. Airport administrators told us T-Mobile is the only authorized Wi-Fi provider. So you think that there could be a hacker here right now? That's correct. Catching and prosecuting a hacker, especially at an airport, is extremely difficult. E.J. Hilbert is a retired FBI agent who specialized in... Okay, I'll stop it there. But I think you get the idea. Um, public Wi-Fi, if you can help not going on it, um, it's a little bit more secure. I'd certainly use your own data if you can. And talking about data, transferring data usually using these tools are quick and cost, cost nothing really. Um, however, it is essential that you set your settings right. Otherwise, you may just get something dropped into your phone that you really didn't want. It's worth checking how yours is set up. Along with keeping your phone secure, it also saves your battery when it's turned off. Um, depending on what phone you use, it's, it may be AirDrop, Bluetooth for the Apple or NFC for the near field communication for Android phones. Um, lots of information on the, on the website about the do's and don'ts of having it switched on and switched off. I do understand that some of your uh, tracking devices, if you've got a Fitbit or something, then obviously that uses the, uh, the Bluetooth. But just have a think about, do you really need to have it switched on? Can you just keep switching it on and off um, as and when you need it? And then the other thing is location services. Just having a look now, um, which does this apply to you? I've got your location services switched on for absolutely everything or turned off for everything. Or are you just careful about which apps can use your location? And I guess some of you may out there not really know about location services or how to change it. But it is important and it's certainly worth looking at um, who's tracking your location. You don't have to have it turned off completely, but I would recommend that you look at your lo location settings for each app uh, and, and set it so that it's, it's applicable to that app. Not every app or website needs to know where you are or that you go to your friend's house every morning or every night at a particular time. Because obviously if some criminals can actually then start to uh, track what you're doing and where you're going. So let's have a look. Um, notification settings, that's the other thing. Whatever device you use, do you really need to have them switched on and pinging and flashing all the time? Manage your settings to suit your lifestyle, but remember, if you do have to have no, no, no notifications switched on, they appear on your phone, especially if your phone's locked. So you may be getting some um, sensitive verification codes sent through. Just think and be mindful of who else can actually read them, who else is around when uh, these things are sent through, especially if your phone's stolen. So protect yourself, three online basic rules, that's all it is. And just to recap and to start you on the right track for having good cyber hygiene, just follow these three simple basic steps. I know I've talked about quite a lot of things and you're probably thinking where on earth do I start? But first of all, remember, if you are running old systems, then there aren't any updates or patches available for them. So it's no use running an old system and then also trying to do your security soft, software updates. It's not going to match and it's not just going to happen at all. But if you follow these three steps to start with, 80% of cybercrime would be stopped. And then for those of you who are on social media, um, it is worth following the Get Safe Online Commonwealth social media channels. Um, you'll get up-to-date and reliable information and all, of, all about the latest scams as well. So they're on Instagram and they're actually on Facebook as well. By all means, follow us in the UK. Um, you're welcome to, to, to piggyback on us as well. So coming up next week, I was 
I'm going to be here same time next week, next Thursday. Um, it's Friday morning for me. Um, but I was thinking about looking at keeping your identity safe and possibly looking at around fake news, communication tools like Zoom, definitely looking at social media. And then I was going to go into some more detail about the scams, dating scams, banking, about online shopping, and the one that is very uh, topical now, the sextortation scams that are there. And then looking at children, um, gaming, mental health, possible grooming, and the choices that children have out there. But by all means, drop us um, a line in the chat if you if you need to know about something else or you want us to cover something else, just drop it in there and I'll pick it up as we go along. So if you are experiencing any, any kind of scams or intimidation or any distressing things online, please do report it to your local police. If it is happening um, right now or it's, a, it, it's an emergency, then ring the hotline, which is 211 but otherwise just contact your local stations. And just to remind you all that the websites are free to access and they're there for you to use any time of day, 24 seven. So I'll leave the websites up for you so you can, uh, you can take them down or jot them down or take a screenshot, whichever you need to work for you. But I've come to the end of the session and um, I'm just having a look through to see if we've actually got any questions there as well. I have been answering some as we go along as well. But please do, if you have any questions, just pop them in there. Or if we, if you raise your hand, we can unmute you and we can get them questions out and aired. But I'll just hand you over to Brittany now.